Hey everyone, welcome back to the Super Vintage League. I'm Luis Scott Vargas here with uh, Eric Froelich, who's going to be joining me on commentary. And uh, we're going to watch uh, Randy play against Bob in the same matchup Bob played last week. Against you, actually. Yeah, he did play that matchup last week, and I think it went pretty well for me. Uh, I would say so. <laughs> uh, I, you even beat a resolved Oath Gristle brand, so uh, yeah. it, it, that ended up being pretty... Like, again, when you resolve Oath and activate it, you usually do not lose. Right. Um... One thing Bob wasn't counting on was that I was playing really well, and also I had exactly the cards I needed. So both yeah. those things. It's yeah. like that whole combo. If I played badly or I didn't have the perfect cards, I would have lost. And then uh, <laughs> you almost make it didn't make it this week, actually, because uh, as Merfolk tends to do, you got a little flooded. Yeah, nice reference. <laughs> so, it's been well, a pretty interesting last 48 hours. Yeah, you you on your drive back from uh, Salt Lake City, where you actually made top four, uh, the highway got flooded out, and you almost well, you just got stranded for like over a day. Yeah, uh, Honey's not happy about that either. But yeah, we I uh, played Brandon Nelson in the semis, we gave him some extra time to try to rebook his flight, which ended up causing me to barely miss my flight. So I got I had to uh, drive back with Huey, Owen, and uh, Ben S on Monday morning, and yeah, there was just flash floods, the highway is completely destroyed, there's no way to drive from Utah to Vegas, because there's really only one highway, and all the other roads were pretty messed up too, so uh, yeah, we got stuck in Mesquite, Nevada, there was no electricity, we had no gas, so we couldn't try to go anywhere or do anything, <laughs> and there were also no roads, so it was a pretty uh, pretty interesting combination. How did you end up... Uh getting out of there without gas well once electricity came on we were able to get gas the problem was that the pumps couldn't operate because of the electricity oh I see. so that, that was the problem and so the electricity we were told wasn't going to come on until closer to midnight and at that point without being able to see like these little side roads to see how much damage there was without there wasn't going to be a light there wasn't going to be any knowledge of whether roads existed if we started driving in a different pass it really just <laughs> became uh not not the best idea to keep trying to uh figure out a way back in the middle of the night. So we woke up this morning, we were able to uh, find a, a reasonable detour down what happens to be called the Valley of Fire. So uh, that was nice. And then we got a warning while driving through that that the, that the transmission was about to blow. So uh, <laughs> thought we were gonna get stuck in the Valley of Fire after all this, but uh, yeah, we ended up getting back. So it worked out fine. Cool. Uh, well, you're here and uh, we're gonna head down to the game. Love games. What do we have here? So it looks like Randy has two islands, wasteland, two curse catchers, two mental missteps. So not a hand that can really do anything, but also sweet. And Bob mold to what looks like a pretty horrendous five of <laughs> <laughs> Library Orchard Mox Gristlebrand Force of Will, which is maybe better than a four? I don't actually know if that's true. It does resemble a horrible five, I'll give you that. Oh, no, Randy, off Randy, Randy also mulliganing apparently and uh, keeping. <laughs> it looks like oh no no he played a he, he played a curse catcher island so th there we are. Yeah, I, I actually cut a bunch of lands from my Merfolk deck to try to prevent all this flooding, and yet it still happens to me in real life. Just very unlucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Bob's That's choosing out the coverage many many times. I am extremely unlucky. So, so Bob choosing not not to play uh, a, a land in, in order to to maybe build up cards for library and not get wastelanded. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of already drawing dead, but you know, he's drawing life. Yeah, Randy's draw just really does nothing. So that is one huge benefit for Bob. Like this I mean, library, if, well, I mean, it's going to get a card, but... I mean, if I Bob know. draws an Oath, he just does he just win? He just <laughs> plays an Oath and Randy doesn't have a counterspell? <laughs> yeah, if, does Bob have a blue card in his hand? He doesn't to go with Forcible, right? No, he's, he's going to draw a card off library and gets to draw a card for his turn, so... Yeah. Oh, this Null Rod. 
is going to actually be pretty good. It's going to shut down an oath from being able to do anything immediately. Of course, shuts down the mob and the time bolt. Yeah, Norod is a pretty good draw on Randy's part. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pretty strong artifacts in this matchup against Bob. Of course, he's going to be boarding in his nature's claims, deal with the null rods, and of course the graph diggers cages that I imagine Randy is uh, going to yeah. be bringing in. I mean, Oath is quite good against Merfolk, but Graph Digger's Cage is obviously just the one man answer. And Graph Digger's Cage is actually the reason I don't really love Oath in this format. Yeah, that is completely reasonable. So B Bob pitching two cards to kill a Curse Catcher, presumably. <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Yeah, I think... It's kind of tough, because if Bob played a Mox last turn, he could pay for a Curse Catcher, it would be really good here. But if you played a Mox and then had to use Force, he couldn't use Library. So, I guess he couldn't use Library if he used Force either way. No, he goes up to 8. So yeah, playing a Mox would have been tough. But, but it wouldn't... Couldn't you just play Library and Main Phase draw a card off the, off the Library and play a Mox and say go with 7? Yeah, but then he would... If he Forced, he goes down to 5. So I think that's what he, he was hoping to avoid. But I guess with the Cavern of Souls out, the only card you can actually force a will in Randy's entire deck is Null Rod, or like Time Walk. So, yeah, I think it was pretty unlikely that he was going to want to cast Force of Will because it wasn't going to do anything against Curse Catcher anyway. Yeah. And he would have to draw a blue card for it to even be on. So, yeah, yeah. it doesn't really make sense to go for that. Yeah, it seems like playing playing Mox would have would have would have done the trick. So yeah, now he should just put, well do the trick as in force another curse catcher. Well, I mean that's better than the current, which was force one curse catcher. <laughs> I I don't know yes. if I love cat tapping Forbidden Orchard in this spot. You're under no clock, and now you just doubled it. And Voltaic he doesn't do much in the face of Null Rod. Is there a reason you always call it Voltaic? Uh, that's because that's how I pronounce it. Okay. I, th I thought you were just trolling for a while, but now I'm starting to think that's how you actually think it's pronounced. <laughs> Did you see I kept sending you the dictionary.com thing where it just audibly says the word for you? No. It just goes, Voltaic. Voltaic. I <laughs> guess I, 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 I just called it that forever, so I <laughs> I suspect that is that is what wh wh where it comes from. Yeah, I got to listen to a lot of interesting Ben pronunciations on this uh 40-hour journey to go 200 miles. Well, yes. Ben is an impressive individual. He took a break from pronouncing cards to try to eat some Chipotle, though, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he's done that before. That yeah, was seriously the, hi the highlight of coverage. Of course it so, was. Ran Randy drawing a Lord here, I think, is likely going to be enough, just because Bob... The only thing he had really had going for him was that he was not under a clock, but now he's under a clock. Even it's not even clear that an oath saves him here. We might be in the same abrupt, situation. Abrupt to K on Nora. I can't be countered by Curse Catcher, and then he can vault play key. his time vault win, right? So I wonder if Randy should have misstepped the Voltaic key just because of that scenario. It might actually be yeah. that might actually be the case. Entirely possible, yeah. So Bob gets attacked down to one, then oaths up a Gristlebrand. Yeah, that is what happens. And then needs to draw. He just a needs a way to get rid of the Lord or Catcher. Those are the only th like, or a, or, a strip yeah. mine, some way to kill his own underground. Yeah. <laughs> the way that Randy lost against Rich in uh, the first round. Yeah. <laughs> well, never mind. Or, or that's game. So, ruin all the suspense. Worthless. He's having a hard time bobbing for wins here. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> oh boy. So, I'm going to take a look at a uh, deck list here. Maybe we take a look at some of the sideboarding options that the, both players have. Since th this is certainly a, a match where, uh, you know, the sideboard is a lot more relevant than in some matches. Like when me and Tom played, our sideboards were not huge. Obviously, when Josh and, and Chris played, it was really big for Josh, not Chris. And uh, here, I think, I think Randy, it seems like Randy gets a decent amount more out of the sideboard. Well, Bob gets a lot, too. I mean, obviously I have some idea of what Bob's looking to do. We played this matchup last week. Right. I thought Cunning Wish was a little slow. Um, not necessarily what you want, but Nature's Claims are really good. Toxic Deluge, of course, is great. Abrupt Decay is really, really good. Um, 
Tom just completely confused me with Toxic Deluge, by the way. I had out, you know, Pyromancer and a bunch of tokens. And then Tom's life went down by one just out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what just happened? And then it goes on the stack. But, uh, <laughs> I'm impressed that you were able to turn this all about you, but actually I'm not really. It's exactly what I expected that to happen. I, I was just saying, when your opponent casts Toxic Deluge on Moto, it's really hard to, to not... To, to not know what's or to know what's going on because they pay life when you haven't seen the card yet. That, <laughs> I mean, that's the part that's funny. Force of Will is the same thing except you usually know what's happening because you're supposed right. to. Right, Force of Will is is uh, one I was used to. So yeah, Bob is getting the you know decay and the the toxic deluge, the forest. I would imagine nature's claims. Yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure what's coming out. Uh, yeah, I don't actually could, know what you want to board out. He, Maybe things like mana drain and force of will. Those are really not that exciting, but I I no. really hate I really hate drain in this matchup. I like I like misstep. I actually have been it's taking up force of will against Merfolk. It's just so bad. And Thoughtseize is also like pretty medium, just because like what's the first card you said? Misstep. I said Thoughtseize. Yeah, Thoughtseize is pretty bad. I actually don't love you know misdirection. I think is is fairly bad, and I actually don't love mystical tutor either here, just because it feels like a lot of the time you're not tutoring for anything that's that great. Yeah, Mystical Tutor is, uh, yeah. Like, the one benefit of Mystical Tutor is that you can just go get Demonic Tutor, which oftentimes will just win. On True. Your turn. So, uh, yeah, it goes both ways. Yeah. I, I just, now that Mental Missteps out, it's even worse, I think, because one of the one of the reasons Mystical Tutor was good it was Mystical for Ancestral was just like a solid early play. Not a great one, but okay. Now it's just not a great one. Yeah. Whereas Randy is uh, looking to board in. Well, primarily the uh, the the graph diggers cages. I'm not sure what else is a uh, is, is, is. Do you think he would want? I guess another null rod to stop bolt key is probably pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how many null rods is he playing main there? Just two. He is, is he playing. Uh, he's just playing the. Uh, he's playing three. He's actually got. He's got all the null rods in the world. Null rod flooded. Uh, yeah, I think. No rod certainly good, but. Not the end-all be-all. You don't want to get no rod flooded, but certainly a good card. You know Bob's bringing in a bunch of ways to kill artifacts already because of pages, so yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. Sounds like we're heading back and going to see them battling. Hello and welcome. What are we looking at? I cannot see it. Oh, I need to scroll my screen. <laughs> so Randy's hand does not have an island or land that produces wow. land. And he and he's just running it. Well, he's got a mock sapphire and a cage and spell pierce, mental misstep, curse catcher, and two LD spells. So kind of a sweet hand, although really yeah. can put can put very little pressure on Bob. And even if you draw his lords, he can't cast them. Yeah, so, I mean, look, looking at this, I think you keep it because it's got a lot of the cards you want. But yes, you do need to draw, I guess, like Cozy's Trickster. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's hand looks pretty sweet. Are you looking at it now or no? Yeah, yeah. The, multiple tutors, like Demonic and Vamp, then Time Walk and Mental Mista, plus Orchard Mox Emerald. It's, it's kind of a shame that he's got Orchard as his only black source here because... Uh, it's pretty tough to just tap those tap it every turn. That solves Randy's problem, you know, for for him. Right. I, I think Time Walk might be like obviously Oath is the trump and anything that stops Oath is, you know, that goes back and forth, kind of goes without saying, but Time Walk on both sides is extremely powerful in this matchup, I think. Like yeah. Time Walk when you're just getting out a bit of a clock just to be able to set up some of your disruption is insane. And of course when you're going for your combo and, you know, just being able to cast Oath and then Time Walk is just it's really good. Yeah, I mean, Time Walk, it's, it's funny how much better it is now than it used to be in Vintage. I mean, it's, it's always obviously been a great card, but people are playing so many more creatures now, and Time Walk is just awesome with creatures. It's just not great in the random blue decks that have no creatures. But well, it's also it's, so great with Planeswalkers. Yeah, Planeswalkers, I mean, Jace Time Walk is great with same combo. So it looks like Bob's still in the tank here. I mean, the, the thing is, this hand's great. I, I would imagine I would start with just Island Mox Time Walk. Oh, yeah? I don't know. I, I don't know. The, the problem is you can start with... I guess you can start with, like... The other option is, like, Orchard Vamp or, or, or Orchard Mox DT for Oath. But 
I really hate I really hate giving them tokens. I guess you I guess you actually can't time walk turn one here, can you? You really just yeah. have to just tutor for a token on turn one just not that big a deal when your hand is this powerful and you should be able to go off and by go off I I mean exactly cast a oath like pretty quickly. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, he, Bob's going to tutor for Oath here, is our assumption, and Randy's going to play turn one Cage, maybe just by tapping his colorless land to keep Spell Pierce and Mental misstep up, or maybe just by playing Curse Catcher first, and Bob's going to misstep and lose the fight there. Yeah, he can also, he can Vant tutor for anything. What, what, <laughs> what, if, Bob, what if Bob just uh, got, like, Voltaic Key and, and went to go tutor for Time Vault 2? <laughs> that would be uh, awesome. He could just also Vant Tutor for Black Lotus and just go Oath Time Walk. But if he wasn't getting caged, let's say. Right. He's getting Ra caged. Yeah, Randy's got lots of ways to win this uh, particular battle. So and I, so I, I, there's no way that Cage is not in play at the end of this turn. You know, Cage is important to have in play. Alright, so, as expected. Yep. And Bob, of course, has to fight over it, and Randy choosing to use the, the misstep, it lo looks like. So what's your play now, if you're Bob? Are you vamping in your upkeep, getting, I don't know, Nature's Claim, Abrupt Decay type card? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it now, and Nature's Claim is more appealing because you can just go Oath and untap Nature's Claim Time Walk, but it does lose to Misstep. You also know you're getting Wastelanded, so you have to vamp this turn, I think. Right. Yeah, the Wasteland, of course, very big. Yeah, my inclination would be to vamp, vamp for Nature's Claim and then just play the Oath. And if uh, if it ends up getting countered, then you know that's not the end of the world. So, Bob can just run out the oath right here. I guess we get to see. He still gets a draw step because he's not Van Tutoring. Yeah. Uh, it will will resolve. And he does have a lot of cards in this deck that can take care of the Graph Digger's Cage. Of course, that number goes down dramatically once the Orchard gets wasteland. Yeah. But he does also have a time walk. Yeah, which gives him a little time. He, unfortunately, Orchard punishing Bob pretty badly here. Yeah. Since this, this is the kind of... Great. Yeah, this is the kind of game you just lose off of uh, just, you know, giving your opponent three to four power. I guess it's just going to be two power this game, but that's still a decent amount. Yeah, it is going to be a fast enough clock, especially Randy drawing his obviously restricted one of copy of Strip Mine to go with Bob's, I believe, only basic in his deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basics are for suckers. I guess I only have two. <laughs> All the lands down? Yeah, me too. Oh, wait, ten. I used to play, like, six basics in my vintage deck. That was sweet. You would. Were they mountains? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they were. <laughs> yeah, the mountains are sweet. And medium. Played them at all the Pro Tours this year, didn't win any matches, so <laughs> kind of off it. <laughs> yeah, I got trapped in the... I would basically change to the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> while somehow flooded. It, it was a really weird weekend. So if you're a... Uh, and if you're if you're, basic. if you're Randy, would you curse catch your time walk? Uh, hmm. That is a good question. I guess there's really no reason to. It does yeah. cut down your clock like really dramatically. Like five turns versus eight is huge. Yeah, and, and given Bob has so few resources, it's not like he's going to be able to play a ton of stuff. Right. Yeah, Bob's just playing out all of his cards. And they are not good. <laughs> just mono oaths. Yeah, and Randy, Randy does strip mine, so no blue mana going to be left. He has to miss that, so nature's playing not a live draw yep. right now. <laughs> the only card Bob can cast that's relevant, Randy can just counter. If yeah. Bob draws two nature's claims in a row, he probably still wins. Uh, yeah. He goes to 12, nature's claims gets to counter, goes to 9. Actually, he doesn't, because strip mine is going to take care of the island and no rod. Well, I guess Randy can't cast everything that he needs to. He wants to use the strip mine, and Mock Sapphire is his only blue source. If he had Nullrod in play, if he had, you know, let's say he draws a land next turn and cast Nullrod. Trust catcher Nullrod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'll shut down the Mox Emerald and turn off Nature's Claim. 
the second copy of Nature's Claim since he already has the misstep for the first. Which is pretty insane. Yeah, Bob is drawing pretty slim here. What if Bob draws Gristlebrand? Yeah. Is there some way Bob can combo by, like, no, wait, no, Graph Digger Skates. I was wondering if there was a way to go off with, like, Memories Journey or something sweet. Just mill your deck and not be able to do anything, but... I, I, there, so I, I, I've oathed with Graph Digger's Cage and play before. You did what? I've activated oath with Graph Digger's Cage and play before. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sweet to think about. Well, uh -huh. so... Randy's going to put the hammer lock on this one with the null rod. Yeah. So the reason I was uh, oathing was I had a top out, and I would keep topping and then to a Snapcaster, and then then oath milling, milling my top three cards, basically. It was pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Value. I and lost that game. Started. I also had Snapcaster and Oath in my deck after board because I forgot to board out Snapcaster. <laughs> Boy. I, my opponent probably thought I was playing like a Yogmoth Will Snapcaster Oath combo deck. I just forgot to board out Snapcasters. All the stories of you back in the day are pretty impressive. Like, oh yeah, I just played a deck that could only move tendrils, and then I just forgot to put it in my board. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. Scumbag doll of NorCal. Yeah. Tricking him into conceding. Medium. Show and Tell is actually one of Bob's better cards in general because it gets around Cage, but Curse Catcher is going to make that a, you know not remotely castable here. Is Even Nor Bob two Wasteland Strip Mine Curse Catcher good against the Show and Tell draw? Yeah, medium. Randy can't cast you know his own his own Lord here, which is pretty bad for him. Oh yeah, awful. Yeah, if that Forbidden Orchard had been like an underground sea, then Bob would have actually been in much better shape here. That is true, yes. How do you feel about uh, about your matchup? Uh, well, because I was chained to the rocks, literally, I was not able to test it. But uh, I've been told it's a bad matchup, so I think I should be maybe a small dog. I mean, I didn't test my matchup either. I just played it very well. <laughs> You play against Tom, like, every five minutes of every day. That's true. <laughs> Just because you never lose doesn't mean you haven't played. Well, so yep. Bob's going to drop to 0-3 after playing against multiple Merfolk decks. Yep. And you, where you got very lucky. If Paul had uh, been on the ride back with you guys, would you have been Cheon to the Rocks? <laughs> no, we would not. Because we would have used his incredible luck to easily divert the storm. That's true. <laughs> I was in. I was back at home and at work an hour after I left Salt Lake, basically. <laughs> yeah, that would have also happened to me if I decided to book a flight instead of going with my friends in a car. But uh, oh yeah. well, so, it is what it is. It was an, it was an adventure, as uh, Ben Stark so eloquently put it. One of the <laughs> few words that he knows. I, <laughs> I believe I believe that he said that it was an adventure. I don't believe it was eloquently put. <laughs> well, yeah, he tried. Ben, ben was probably excited. He likes stuff like that for some reason. Yeah, he does. He was he was ranting about, like, we have all the, the magic skill and poker skill and this skill and this skill in the world. We need these little hiccups in life. This is what makes it all great. I'm like, or we could have just gone home very easily. That would have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> eh, whatever. It is what it is. It ended up not being as bad as it could have been. There, it seemed like for a period of time that we were going to be real stranded. The road itself is not going to be open for at least three to four more days. So uh, it could have been a rough spot where we'd have to drive, you know, approximately 15 hours the opposite direction to try to figure something else out. And That seemed worse, yeah. And if I we mean, when tried you anything and got abandoned with no gas because there was no cell service, no electricity, like, you know, it was a rough spot for a little while, but it ended up being completely fine. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys, you most importantly got here, got back in time to, to play in the Vintage League, so. Yeah, that was most important. I'm sure that that's mostly what you guys were worried about. Oh, yeah. So uh, someone asked uh, if we're going to the cons pre-release. I'm going to go to the pre-release here in Denver, I think. I, I, I haven't decided where yet, but I don't think I'm heading home for it, so I think I'm going to stick around here. Yeah, I mean, entirely possible. There's a, a lot of magic players in Vegas right now. It's a reasonable chance I go. I went to the last one, but not 100%. It really just depends. The weekends are sometimes a little hectic, but uh, I do enjoy pre-releases, and I, I do just enjoy playing magic, so... I try to go to the ones I can. I enjoy talking about people playing Magic. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I am probably going to go until the pre-release here in Denver, and maybe pick up some drafts afterwards as well. 
Oh, so donating back to the community a little bit, that's good. <laughs> yeah, something something along those lines. Did you uh, did you figure out how you're sideboarding against Steve yet? <laughs> no. Text me something good, please. <laughs> yeah, if I think of something. I, I have never played Merfolk in Vintage, and I've never... Oh, no, I, I have played Doomsday, never mind. But never played Merfolk. Doomsday yeah, I mean, Doomsday, Doomsday ne neither have I, to be fair. Yeah. I think Steve's deck is really sweet. I, I think he has a, a really good list. Uh, definitely strong against the matchups he's set up, and of course he's 2-0. And, uh, and uh, yeah, understands his deck a lot better than I do. I certainly admit that. Yeah, yeah, Steve, I mean, has so far... Played some pretty convincing matches here. I mean, he, they they weren't they were definitely close, but he he was able to doomsday up a win every time, which is again pretty hard. Doomsday is a hard card to play. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I've, I've been playing pretty well lately. I think I played really well this weekend, but I'm still kind of in M15 limited mode. So uh, the jump from M15 limited to vintage not the smallest to make. Well, you, you bridged the gap by playing with Curse Catcher and, you know, Master of the Pearl Trident. That was my entire intention, yes. I tried <laughs> to bridge the gap with Curse Catchers. Yeah, that, that, you, that is, your, your deck's probably the closest to an M15 Limited deck than any of the de other decks people are playing here. Uh, maybe the lucky M15 Limited decks you happen to get handed, but uh, not <laughs> yeah. too similar to the ones that I've played. Although, I guess, I guess I did have Coral Barrier and a lot of squids. I had a Chasm Stalker and, like, four Coral Barriers between my first two draft decks for the top eight. And so, uh, yeah, I am a little used to island walking, so wouldn't mind getting to do some of that. Yeah, I mean, the Coral Bears is one of the better cards in a lot of the matchups, and it does have island walk. Island walk also surprisingly relevant uh, in in this particular, in, you know, in Vintage. Like, it's been relevant in a number of matches. We just saw uh, Dave beat Rich by island walking past a mirror Battlesphere, which is a, a strange coincidence of factors for Vintage. <laughs> Yeah, and of course you mentioned my match last week against Bob, where he got to activate the Oath, get Gristle burned out, but the Island Walk again was quite big. Yeah. Well, uh, Island Walk's not going to be too relevant in your match, but uh, we're going to take a very short break, and then we'll be back with your match against Steve Manian. I'm glad Maniac can't block now. Is that your deal? <laughs> All right, we'll be back soon.